What is up guys? I'm recording my Q&A video right now. I'm going to answer about 20 questions or so. I will let you know when it's up. I got my camera here and I got my questions here and I'm getting it done. What is up guys? I'm recording my Q&A video right now. It has been so long since I've done a sit down video with you. Um, what is new with me? It is December 7th, 6th, it's I cannot believe it's already December. That just like the whole year flew by like crazy. Last year in December, I got signed with LiveFit. So I've officially been with them for a full year, which is just crazy because it seems like yesterday. Um, we got a tree. We got a little cute tree for our house. How cute is that? And we've also had to barricade the tree because we don't want Sadie to eat our presents. <laughs> so. We have a cute little tree. I have a new dog. As you all know, Sadie already. Sadie's getting pretty old now and pretty big, but I love it. I love watching her grow. I just hope she gets to be super big and fun. And I love big dogs. I love all dogs, let's be real. This video is the Q&A video that I promoted on my Instagram. I haven't done a Q&A in what seems like since I started my channel. I think I did one like way a long time ago, but um, yeah, so Q&A this time, I got over a hundred questions, which is insane. So to everybody who asked me questions, I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for um, participating and asking me these questions. I want to help as many people as I can through this Q&A. I think I'm going to do like 20 questions, the first 20 questions that I read that I like, that I want to answer. So at that, let's get started. <laughs> is do you ever plan on doing a powerlifting meet? Oh, and by the way, you guys, I'm going to write each question down in the description box below. So if you don't want to watch the whole video, you can find all the questions that I answered in the description box. Anyways, um, first question, do you ever plan on doing a powerlifting meet? Uh, yeah, I am going to do one. I, I Powerlifting has always interested me. I've had, I have a lot of powerlifting friends, um, and I've always just loved hitting my PRs and getting stronger and I love benching and I love deadlifting and I'm getting better on my squat. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna do a powerlifting meet. I'm thinking it will probably be the springtime of 2017, so coming up um, or in the summer. I don't know, it just depends on how my school schedule is next semester and if I can commit to something like that um, and still graduate. <laughs> Cause you all know that's hard. Okay, um, so yeah, I am gonna do it. If you couldn't have fitness as a hobby or related to your career in some evil, bad up, made hypothetical world, what would you spend your time doing instead? So, um, if I couldn't do fitness for my career, I would most likely do something that involves either animals, like be a veter veterinarian, or, um, hey, what are you doing? She's looking at my water, like she's gonna pounce on my water. I would probably be a vet veterinarian or I would work with senior citizens. Um, I love senior citizens, I love old people. I just think they're so interesting and just the cutest things ever. And so I would either work with senior citizens or animals or if I could make it, I would be an artist because I love doing art and that's originally what I went to school for was art. So. One of those three would probably be my route. What's been the biggest challenge with raising a puppy? That is a good one too. Um, a couple things. When she was a little, little puppy, like she's still a puppy, but when we first got her, she couldn't sleep through the whole night without like going to the bathroom. So um, I would set my alarm in the middle of the night, like at two, and then I would set it for four, and I would have to wake up and take her outside because I didn't want her to pee in the house. And I wanted her to get used to peeing outside and stuff. So. Um, that was challenging. That lasted about a couple weeks every night. Um, and then now, now it's just, it's challenging actually leaving her alone. Like when I have to go to class 
or when I have to go do something and like she's just staring with her paws on the glass door like looking at me all sad like that's really hard to leave um, and, and if I'm gonna be honest I have definitely skipped some classes because I couldn't leave her cuz I'm like oh, I can't leave you you're in my heart you know yeah that's it otherwise she's just an amazing blessing in our life how did you build the courage to start your own YouTube channel is your channel going the way you envisioned it so actually my YouTube channel has been more than I ever imagined it to be. Um, it's just grown really fast so far and I've gotten amazing feedback on my videos and I feel like I'm more comfortable in front of the camera now, um, just with time, that happens with time, but I love my YouTube channel and I'm, I'm, it makes me sad because I have, I have so many other commitments that sometimes I can't post as much as I want to and in real time, um, but I am graduating this year and I plan to fully like YouTube everything after that like when I have a lot more time but one thing that I want to talk about about my YouTube channel that's recently ha been happening I feel like I'm a victim for from the YouTube glitch apparently there's this YouTube glitch that's happening to a lot of channels um, and and some are worse than others like I know that if you guys watch Chelsea lifts She's having a horrible, horrible experience with YouTube. She has over 120,000 uh, subscribers, and every time she uploads a video, YouTube automatically unsubscribes people from her channel, like hundreds of people, hundreds of people at a time. So like, she'll upload a video, and she'll lose 600 followers or something like that, like crazy. Um, so it's killing her channel because, and those people who get unsubscribed don't even know that they're unsubscribed, like YouTube, just has a glitch where it just does it. Some of them thought that she just left YouTube and that's why she, they weren't hearing from her and stuff. Um, but for me, that's not happening for me yet, but every time I've been uploading a video, like the last five videos that I've uploaded, um, it either doesn't notify my subscribers or it doesn't show up my video in the recommended feed for some people and it doesn't come up in the sidebar. So literally the only way you can watch it is if you go to my channel and search for the video. Like if you're watching another video, it won't come up in like your recommended or anything like that. And that's how I get a lot of views. That's how a lot of people grow. So I'm really concerned about that. Um, you know, usually I get like 8,000 views kind of like on each video on average. But for the last like five videos, I've gotten like 2,000 and that's a lot. That's a whole lot of people not watching my videos. And I'm, I'm wondering if it, I thought it was something that I was doing wrong um, until I kind of like asked around and then I heard from other people that was happening too as well. So I really hope that that gets fixed, that YouTube fixes that, um, that I'm not, no longer a victim of that anymore and that, that it doesn't escalate to like what Chelsea is dealing with. Um, but a good way that you can make sure that you don't get uns unsubscribed from my videos is if you go to my channel and you hit the little bell next to subscribe that will notify you. It will send you an, a notification no matter what when I upload a video. Like that is a sure way to see my videos. So if you want to be notified about my videos on my channel, please go hit that bell and this will not happen to you. <sighs> it's kind of stressing me out actually. Like I want my channel to keep growing and to keep, I want to keep spreading to uh, to people my message and my videos and um, and I just hope that they fix it because there's literally nothing I can do. I'm totally at the mercy of YouTube so <sighs> that's a little bit of stress that I wanted to share. Um, thank you for that question. Next question, what or who, who motivates you each day as you work out? Like I've said before, you guys are my number one motivation. Knowing that I am helping you and inspiring you and giving you new workouts and giving you fitness tips and stuff like that and helping you in your fitness journey is what keeps me going every day. What's your favorite cheat meal? I love this question. I love food, everything. I would say probably, probably pizza or like, I don't know, cheat meal. Pizza and cookies. Who within the fitness world has made the most positive impression on you for the industry? Hands down, hands down, this is Heidi Summers. Heidi has, is just the, yeah, and I'm running out of battery, sorry, pause. Back to what I was saying. Heidi Summers, hand down, hands down, my number one um, person in the industry who has just impressed me so much, um, just with her personality, her generosity, her, She's just such a kind, kind soul, and she, when I signed with LiveFit, totally just took me under her wing. She 
answered all of my questions. She helped me make good decisions. Um, she's just someone that I really look up to and I really inspire, aspire to be like her and to um, kind of make for myself like what she's done for herself in the industry. I think she's such a positive light in this industry. Um, this industry needs more people like that and I can only hope to be half as good as what she has done with this industry and the person that she's made herself. So Heidi Summers, hands down, I'm sure you guys like love her too. So she is 100% more awesome than you'd ever think. Like she's just the best. Next question. You've mentioned you've had several injuries in the past. During that time, how did you stay positive and did you still work out with those injuries? So I had two meniscal knee repairs when I was in high school. Since I started lifting seriously, um, I have had a couple injuries. My knees, since I tore my meniscus, have always been a problem, um, but they haven't held me back from weightlifting. They don't really bother me much anymore, but when they do bother me, if I'm doing an exercise and I feel my knees start to twinge, I stop, immediately stop the exercise. I you either go home, ice my knee, massage it, take some ibuprofen, some anti-inflammatory medicine, um, and rest, and then go again when they feel better. Um, so definitely, if you have an injury and you're doing an exercise and it's hurting you, stop, 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 stop. Don't do it anymore. You're just gonna hurt yourself more. So. That's my advice on that. I um, also just realized that most, most, not all, but most injuries are temporary. So when you're trying to stay positive, just think in your head, this is temporary. I will be able to lift again. I will be able to do this again. I just have to take care of my body first. Okay, here's one. What do you think about the at-home scales that measure body fat percentage, bone density, and water, accurate or not? Um, I actually learned about this in my kinesiology class, one of them. Those scales that measure, like the, the scales that you stand on that measure your body fat are, they have an, an error rate of about six to 10%. I think something like that, something like crazy big error. So they're not very accurate. What it does is it sends an electrical impedance through your body, through your feet and back down. Um, and it estimates your body fat, but there's so many different factors that can go into that, that measurement. like how hydrated you are, if you're dehydrated, if you're really hydrated, if you have a lot of food in you, if you have a lot of sodium in you, um, your organs, like your clothes, like everything. Um, so if you're not exactly the same level of hydration and sodium and clothes and everything, every time you weigh yourself, it's gonna be different. And on top of that, their error is like six to 10%. So you could be at 15% body fat and it says that you're at 21. Like that's a big difference. So I would just stick to going to your local gym and having a trainer do a skin fold measurement um, and going to the same person each time because some people do it differently. So just want to keep it consistent with body fat measuring. Next question, can you talk about your business? Sure, I would love to talk about my business. I love my business. I, I have a personal training and online nutrition coaching business. So all of my clients are online and I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for training and nutrition and competition prep, so I do it all. But however, I am at max capacity with my clients right now, so I can no longer take any more clients until I get either more time or less clients. So if you are interested in getting personal training and coaching from me, you can go to my website, it's katiecorio.com, and there should be a bar that enter, you enter your email address and what you're interested in, and I will email you when I have a spot open um, to see if you'd like to be a client. Um, so on top of doing that, I have various eBooks that I sell that are on, on my, my website available. I have a 12 week bikini body challenge eBook that I am so proud of. It is so beautiful. I will put a lot of work into that, making it perfect. So um, if you're interested in that, it's on there. I also have nutrition guidelines and I'm also working on a macro, a beginner's guide to macros ebook that's going to teach you how to start counting macros from square one, like how to do it, step-by-step -step instructions and the science behind everything. Um, so it's taken me a while, but I'm writing that right now. I'm also going to write a part two to my um, bikini body challenge ebook. So for those who have completed that, they'll have a second um, challenge to do. And I will also be writing a booty bible glute program ebook just for the glutes. And I have a lot of ebook ideas. 
Um, I'm gonna be doing, I'm in the process of doing a cookbook, an e-cookbook. I have a pancake project one coming up, so lots of exciting things. I'll be announcing that on all of my social media as they come available, but you can always go to my website and see what I have up there, um, like I said, to do before, so. What are your favorite things to do that are not fit fitness related? Cook, I love cooking. Playing with my dog, taking her to the beach, and to the dog park, that's just so much fun. And just spending time with my family. Really, that's like, when I think of like what I wanna do if I had a free day, it would be one of those three things, probably. Or both, or all three. <laughs> How and when did you and Ryan meet? Ryan and I met through a mutual friend. He was interested in doing his first competition and he knew that I was competing and we had one mutual friend who was my roommate at the time and my one of my close friends. Um, and so he asked her if, she, if he could come with her to my show and she said, yeah, sure, come with me. So that's when I met him. I met him at my first competition. Um, I knew who he was, but I hadn't met him before. So I met him at my first competition and he was so unbearably like shy. He would not talk to me after that. He was like super, super shy, like painfully shy. Like, I would just be like, hey, and he would be like this, hi. <laughs> and it was so cute. And then I was just like, oh, he's so cute. I want to like talk to him more. And like, I just thought it was so cute that he would get so uncomfortable talking to me. So I would go out of my way to say hi to him and make him uncomfortable. <laughs> well, we all know how that ended up, so. We're going on two years now. Our two year anniversary will be in March and we are going on a Mexican vacation to celebrate. And I will be vlogging. What's your major in college? I am a kinesiology major in, with an emphasis in fitness specialist. Someone asked, how do you plan on transitioning into figure? Okay, I said on my Instagram, I'm thinking about doing a figure competition and how do I plan on transitioning? Um, like I said, I'm taking a two year bulk two years to bulk and put on size and probably pursue powerlifting in that time um, but once I feel like I have enough size on me I will cut down and see which category I fit into and I'm hoping that it's bigger because I like muscle and I want more muscle so um, that's how I plan on doing it. I have a great coach his name is Marcus Cottle he's doing my nutrition and then I have a coach who does my training his name is Luke Probst and um, I can be happy to give you their information if you want it I'll just link it below so this one asked me red green or Christmas from a fellow Albuquerquean I'm from Albuquerque New Mexico and we eat chili green chili red chili and I know some of you all will be like oh I love chili but you haven't had chili unless you've gone to New Mexico because you can only get it there and you get um, I mean not red chili but green chili I like green chili I like red chili I like it all but probably green is my favorite Paris Nicole fitness Paris um, came to see me when she was in LA. We worked out together, I have a video with her. But she asked me, um, if you had one week to do absolutely anything in the world, what would it be? As in, what would you eat, where would you go, what wild purchases would you make, and who would you hang out with? That's a great question, Paris. Um, one week to do anything in the whole world. I would travel, I would go somewhere I haven't been yet, and I really wanna go to Thailand. That's just like calling my name. So I would go to Thailand with, who would I go with? I would go with my friends and my family. I would take everybody and we would all go to Thailand and we would eat all the Thai food, all of it, like everything that we saw. And <laughs> what wild purchases would I make? I would make, um, I don't know if I would make a wild purchase. I guess like flying everybody out there would be kind of wild. I've always wanted to go to Thailand because I want to see all of the Buddhist temples. As some of you guys know, I'm really interested in Buddhism and studying that. Uh, so I think it would be really cool to see all the Buddhist temples out there and just the beauty, the beauty of Thailand and the food and I've heard the people are really nice. Next question, what has been the best part of your fitness journey? Um, the best part of my fitness journey, I would have to say, is all the wonderful people that I've met since I started. I feel like I've made so many close friends, like really close friends, through just fitness and social media than I have like in my whole life. Like, like man, I'm just so fortunate with all the people that I know and that I've met through my journey. 
definitely. And that includes people that I've met at expos and stuff. Um, people that I've inspired, who've told me that I've inspired them on social media and stuff like that. So it's just been really, really cool to meet people like that. Um, someone said, um, I love Live Fit and One Up Nutrition so much and you just so happens you're an athlete slash sponsored by both. Any advice on certain steps on how to get sponsored by them? That is an amazing question and I've always wanted to do a video on tips for growing your social media and getting sponsored. So maybe I will do that in a separate video but I'm just going to try to sum it up. Just give you a little answer because it's a big video. That would be a big video but I will do that. But um, for right now, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an answer. Um, be yourself, number one. Don't go out and try like, to duplicate a personality or someone on social media that you like. Don't duplicate it. That's not going to get you anywhere. Be yourself. Embrace who you are. Um, be confident. Um, give people a reason to follow you and that reason has to be something that you really believe in. So like, I mean, it could be something that you, like, decide what you what you want people to follow you for. Like, do you want to help people um, in their fitness journey by, you know, helping them with new workouts and fitness tips and nutrition and stuff like that? Do you want to just be a fitness model that people um, look for and follow just for inspiration on your physique only? Or do you want to be somebody that inspires people by what they say? You know, think about what you want to have people follow you for and then have that reason drive your posts. So I try to be well-rounded, like I try to help people with their workouts, with their nutrition, with just um, their mental health, like being positive and loving yourself and things like that. Um, but then there's some people out there who totally own it and who just are out there because they're a fitness model and people just follow them for their body and that's the kind of post that they post and that's totally fine. And then there's people out there who only post workout videos and that's what people follow them for. So you know, decide on what you want people to follow you for and then have that reason drive your posts every day. Be consistent with posting um, so your followers know and expect when you're going to post. Respond to people, be engaged with your followers. Um, post things that people will comment, um, will tag their friends in to bring more people to your page. Um, let's see. And then for the sponsorship side, once you have a following going and you have a, a mission, you have a mission, if you can say to a company, this is my mission, this is what I want to do, this is where I'm going, here are my, all my goals, this is what I stand for and believe in. Once you have all of that concrete, I would go reach out to all your companies that you're interested in and say, hey, even if you don't have a big following, just be like, hey, I know my following is really small right now, but I just wanted to introduce myself. I love your brand. These are the reasons why I love your brand. This is the reason I would be great for your company. I really am interested in working for you someday. I want to be on your radar, so if I can check in in a couple months, that would be great. You know, just, just be present to them. Let them know who you are what you want, what you stand for, and go after it, even if they say no at first. Like, 1UP said no to me first for a couple times, and then I, then they said yes. So, you know, once you reach out to them and they see you, you're going to be on their radar from that point forward, so it never hurts. Um, another question, uh, next question I read is, what supplements do you take? I do take 1UP Nutrition supplements. I've taken them for a long time. I've tried a bunch of different brands, like probably every single brand. But I take 1UP Nutrition, um, I have a whole video on 1UP Nutrition and how to take supplements in general. In that video I break down each and every supplement like BCAAs, protein, fat burner, everything. And what each thing does to your body physiologically so you can understand why you're taking it and the effects it has on your body. And I also go through what supplements are worth taking and what really don't do much. So um, if you're interested in that video I will put it either on the screen right here or down below. I'll put it in both. Um, so go find that video. It's really informative and I think that would help you a lot. And it also goes over men and women, men versus women and bulking versus cutting supplements as well. It's like my whole supplement video. Um, I did it with Ryan so he was good with all the male stuff. So another person says, Hi Katie, what has been the most significant turning point, point of your life and how has it influenced your life, work, and training? 
I would say the like just looking back on my life, I would say the most like the turning point that I had uh, where my life just seemed to take off and I knew I was going in the right direction was um, after my second competition probably, the Frigno Legacy last November, a little over a year ago, everything just started taking off for me. Like that's when I started talking to LiveFit, um, I won my competition, everything like my stars were all just aligning and, and at that point I knew that I was doing something that was gonna last a lifetime. Like I knew at that point I needed to go and run with it, you know what I mean? So many times people their stars will align for something and it's not what they planned and then they'll let it pass by they won't act on it and then they'll look back and be like dang it what if I did that you know so I don't know if that makes sense but my stars were all aligning I was talking to LiveFit about sponsorship I had just won my competition um, my social media had started to take off I was so passionate about fitness and just health and helping people mostly helping people um, and I was just seeing the potential that I had and I just decided to run with it. I changed my major. I, um, I just like, I was like, see you later, Art, I'm going. <laughs> and I just took it and ran. So um, yeah, I'd say that would be my, my turning point in my life, probably. It's just totally changed my, changed my life. Like once I decided that that's the route I was gonna take, I started my business. Um, I mean, it's just like crazy how much my life has changed from a year ago crazy in a good way. If you guys are really passionate about something, if you have a dream that you want to chase and achieve, um, just, just start. Like you never know where, you, where it could take you. And even if your goal is this and getting there takes you to this and it's way better than this was, you like you learn so much about yourself and you should just, just go for it. Like what do you have to lose? You're just either going to succeed or you're going to fail. And in both situations, you learn. In both situations, you learn from it. So you have literally nothing to lose, only stuff to gain. So just go for what your dreams are and you never know where it could take you. Because if you would have told me a year ago that I would be here now, I would have been like, you're crazy. You're crazy. That's what I would have said. Someone asked, um, what made you want to start working out slash getting into fitness? Did you go through something difficult or did it just kind of happen? I actually answered this question in a whole video. It's called um, How I Got Sponsored, My Story. Um, I think that's what it's called. I will link it below as well, but um, I go through my very starting point to, my, to that point in time and explain everything that happened. So I'm gonna direct you to that video. How do you do your hit on your spin bike? Do you ever change it up? Hit on a spin bike. People ask me this a lot. So I have a spin bike. Her name is Betsy. Say hi to Betsy. Hi Betsy. Hi Betsy. Uh, okay, so the way that I do my hit cardio on my spin bike on Miss Betsy over there <laughs> is um, I will be going at a moderate pace. <laughs> then I do my. <laughs> cardio on a spin bike. I do my hit cardio in one minute intervals. So I go one minute as hard as I can and then one minute moderate. Um, so I'll get started, get warmed up, and then I'll do like one minute moderate intensity. Um, butt is on the seat, everything, and then after a minute I crank up the intensity, like turn the knob like a full knob, get up on the pedals so my butt's no longer on the seat and I'm standing up and pedaling as fast as hard as I can for a whole minute and then I go back down and I do that back and forth until my hit is over. Ooh, 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 great question. <laughs> motivational books, question mark? Yay, I love motivational books. Ah, okay, um, so I have a lot of different books that are my favorite and I think I gave one of my favorite books away to Miguel from Live Fit, but um, He's a lived it photographer, I gave it to him. But anyways, it's called Mindfulness by e, by Ollie Doyle. And that's my all-time favorite motivational book. I will put a picture of it right here on the screen and I will also put it in the description box. I bought it on Amazon for like six bucks. And so I have that one and then I also have this. The Art of Happiness by the Dalai Lama. 
Uh, it's a great one as well. Dalai Lama is like my favorite person in the whole world. Um, so I have this and then I have this one. Can you guys tell that I like the Dalai Lama? The Dalai Lama book of quotes. I get a lot of my um, quotes that I write on my Instagram posts from this book. It's just a book full of quotes from the Dalai Lama. I'm just going to open one and read it to you. Share your knowledge. It's a way to achieve immortality. Remember that silence is sometimes the best answer. So it's broken up into, okay, that was wisdom. So it's broken up into categories. Let's find something else. Like happiness, section of happiness. I believe that the purpose of life is to be happy. Um, happiness is not something ready-made. It comes from your own actions. I don't think a per person should have two sides, a private and a public side. There should be no gap that is not honest. These are all quite, like quotes from him. I love this book. And I, yeah. Another question is how I got sponsored by LiveFit. Go watch that video that I just talked about that says like my story, how I got sponsored, that it tells you the story. Um, how do you have time to go to train, to go to classes, and to have a life? This is something that I've struggled with this year for sure. Um, I had to put a cap on the amount of clients I'm taking because I was starting to fail some of my classes because my time was just committed to my business. And You know, it's all about finding balance. Um, something's got to give. You can only spread yourself so thin. So it's just about finding a good balance that you can do everything with. Um, obviously, I want to take more clients, but I can't because I want to graduate. It's just about balance. I do a lot of time management, like meal prepping. Um, some, some days, like when I was prepping, I would map out my days by the hour. Like, okay, this is what I'm gonna wake up, then I'm gonna do this homework, a homework assignment, and then I'm gonna do my cardio, then I'm gonna cook and eat, and then I'm gonna go to class, and then I'm gonna go to the gym, and like, my whole day would be scheduled by the hour. And I had to do that for a long time, especially while I was prepping, just to make sure that I was getting everything I needed to get done. So if you have a crazy busy life like that, um, just time management, pre-planning, and balancing yourself. Don't be hard on yourself if you can't spread yourself so thin. Um, you can only do so much, and you have to remember to keep your um, mental state, mental health in a good state as well as your physical health. So if you're overloading your plate with so much stuff that you're getting so stressed out and it's affecting your mental health, that's not good. Like you should cut back and just. Remember to enjoy life and remember that the most important thing, especially according to the Dalai Lama, like I just read, <laughs> is to be happy. Like, be happy. If you're not happy with what you're doing, don't do it. Change something because you only have one life to live. One life to live, so you might as well be happy while you do it. Do you drink alcohol? No, not really. Um, I'll have a glass of wine or something once in a while, but I'm not a big drinker. I've never been a big drinker, um, no, I guess I'm just like, it makes me, I'm too much of a lightweight, like, I will get tipsy off of a little bit of wine, uh, so I just, I don't really drink, but I have nothing against people who drink, like, I enjoy a glass of wine every once in a while, so, um, I definitely don't try, like, if I'm gonna have a glass of wine, I'll do it on a rest day instead of, like, the day that I train. I don't know why, if that's right or wrong, but that's just what I do. I'm getting a lot of questions about how you can, um, people who struggle hitting their macros every day, like, like how do you, some, like most of these questions are people who can't meet their macro goal, like they can't eat enough. Um, and to those people, I say you should plan out your meals ahead of time. To anybody who's trying to hit macros, pre-planning your meals ahead of time is key. Um, so like tonight before you go to bed, go into your MyFitnessPal, go to the next day and enter in all the food that you're going to eat for the whole day the next day, making sure everything um, doesn't go over or under a macro. And then when you wake up tomorrow morning, all you have to do is follow the plan and you don't have to think about what I'm going to eat, I'm not going to hit this macro or I need this much more grams of whatever. You already have it planned out for you, so all you have to do is eat it. So that's just my tips on how you can um, hit your macros. If you're struggling to meet your macro goal, maybe try some new foods. Try more foods that are like higher in um, calories so you don't have to eat as much. And if vice versa, if you're going over your macros, try to find foods that are lower in calories so you don't do that. 
Okay, so I'm getting a lot of questions about people who are either thinking about competing or who are starting their first competition prep and any advice I have for them. My number one advice is to stay positive. Don't let yourself be mean to yourself because that will only hurt you. So remain positive. Um, if things aren't going as fast as you want them to go, don't get down on yourself. Just take a step back, look at your prep, um, reevaluate, reassess. Um, if you're having a bad day, because there are gonna be days when you feel like crap and you don't wanna go to the gym or like you have a bad workout or you're tired and it's just hard. You know, there's some days that are hard. Expect that, don't let that discourage you from competing. And when you do step on stage, just soak it up because you've worked so hard for it and um, just be proud of yourself. Be proud of yourself for doing that because a lot of people can't, so be proud of yourself. Be nice to yourself. Okay, this person um, asked for a before pic, for a picture before I even started training. So, um, so a little timeline about my journey. I didn't train, well I was active in high school, I played volleyball. And then I got to college and I gained a bunch of weight. So that's when I started that I wanted, that's when I knew I wanted to get into fitness, when I saw myself like heavier and not as fit. So um, I'll show you a picture when I, of the day that I decided to make a change. I remember that day. Um, so I will put the picture right here. This was a picture of me um, in a dressing room trying on bikinis with my friend and I just looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, holy crap, you have never looked like this before. And I didn't look bad, but I looked so different from what I like was used to seeing myself look like. So that was the day that I decided that I need to make a change and get fit. So, um, so that's that picture. And then I did my first competition, which is this picture. And then I took an 18 month long bulk and I bulked in Rome when I lived there. Uh, and so this was a picture of me after my bulk. And then I cut down for the Ferrigno Legacy, which is this picture right here. And then I continued to cut and prep for my last show, which was Nationals, right here. And now I am in a bulk again for uh, a couple years. I'm thinking two year, two year long bulk, and then I'm gonna cut down and I'll update you then. So we'll see how different I look. Will you be doing any more favorites videos, like your June favorites? That was so awesome. Aw, thank you. <laughs> I want to do more videos. I'm just so busy. Like I, I really do want to do a favorites video every month, and I will, I will do one. I promise. I will do one for December. How about that? That's my promise. I'll do one for December, and I will be um, live at the end of the of December or January. So there you go. <laughs> but yes, I will do more. As I get more time, I'll do more. I promise. Um, but make sure that you turn on the notify me bell so you don't miss it if I do post it or else you won't miss it you're gonna miss it and then you're gonna be mad at me and you're gonna be like what the hell Katie where are your favorites videos and I'm gonna be like it's right there what are your macros now I'm happy to say my macros now are so high my metabolism has fully kicked in and now my macros are in the high 300 carbs, so like my high day is like 380, 390 carbs, and then um, my middle day is like 350, my low day is like 330, so 300-ish carbs. I'm eating about 160 grams of protein and 65 grams of fat. So a lot of food. I'm actually kind of struggling to eat this much, which is... I never thought that I would say that, but yeah. Thanks to my coach Marcus for those macros. What are your favorite exercises for a quad focused leg day besides squats and front squats? I love to do the leg press, close, narrow stance leg press. Um, I also love lunges. Lunges are great for the quads. And maybe some Smith Machine, um, Smith Machine split Bulgarian lunges where one leg is up and one leg is back. Uh, you can look, oh yeah, if you want some workout videos, uh, some workout ideas, go to my playlist that I have on my channel called The Train Like Me. 
Those are all my own training videos and the full workout is in the description box for each and every video. So I think I'm going to stop now. Uh, that was a lot of questions. I didn't answer all of them, but if I didn't answer your question and you're still really wanting me to answer, send me an email. Um, go to my website, katiecorio.com, click on contact me and send me an email with your question and I will answer it personally for you. Um, and I'm going to end it at that. After I show you what um, outfit I'm wearing because it's super cute, I'm going to go lift legs, I think. So I'm wearing the um, Strike Tank, the mesh one, and some Lululemon cropped uh, pants. So that's that, you guys. My last video was the Live Fit Fall Collection review and try on. So if you haven't seen that video, go watch it because it's really, really fun to watch, I think. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, YouTube. I love you. Bye, YouTube. High five. Bam. Oh, Sadie, you're so